Okay, <clears throat> I had to play around with this because I noticed when I look at the camera, I've never, I don't do selfies. I look at myself, but I can tell when I look at that, at my stat, myself, I'm not looking directly at the camera. So I have to focus on that little dot lens. So at least it's presentable. All right, so today's Sunday, April 16th, I think. It's gloomy out today. And I'm going to have to get a little closer because <clears throat> I'm going to show you how I uh, administer the fluids under the girls for every other day. And this way the toxins are uh, not sitting in their kidneys. It, it helps flush them out, uh, keeps them healthy, and keeps them from uh, uh, you know, developing any further complications. But uh, they, they're doing pretty well. You know, except uh, there's there's times with Misha she doesn't uh, doesn't really want to eat, but sometimes she fools me. So, all right. So, <clears throat> um, hopefully you can hear me talking to you now. But I'm gonna step away, and I know you're gonna lose audio because you won't be able to hear me. But what I'll do is I will um, find her hippie's shoulder blades, and at the shoulder blade area. Um, to administer these fluids, which is, I don't know if you can see it there, the bag's hanging up there. Uh, it's, I'm going to lift this up a bit. It's on the hanger. It's a, like a one liter bag of, uh, well, see, I'm looking at like <laughs> Okay, so it's one liter of fluids, like electrolytes, chlor uh, sodium chloride, a bunch of other stuff that, I don't know, what, it's all medical mumbo jumbo to me, but it's needed for the girls. So, um, you gather, as you find the shoulder blade area, you want the midsection of the, of their shoulder blade. Once you find that center, uh, point, you want to, like, use these two fingers and a thumb and grab as much flesh, fur flesh as possible, adjust it, and pull up just enough to where there's, like, a... Uh, oh, I don't know how to describe it. Like a not a pocket, but there's enough flesh there where uh, you can insert the needle carefully. Go very not too fast because you don't want to cause any discomfort to them. Uh, once you apply pressure, just use steady pressure, and the needle tip will eventually just pierce right through. And it's the doctor um, says it's. They're just a little just pinch to them, discomfort, but they, you know, they get used to it, and, and, and they have. They've gotten used to it, they, and they've sit and they've, they're sitting through it. Before, um, Misha would just, like, pull away and then pull the needle out, and then I'd have to, you know, reinsert the needle two or three times, and it, it's not the right thing to do. So, um, here it goes. Now, the, um, it's 300 milliliters for, uh, for both girls, and... It could take anywhere from a few minutes to maybe seven, hopefully not ten, because if, if um, that's the case, that means the fluids aren't uh, dripping fast enough through the line. Uh, the, the vet says that if that's the case, just slowly, you know, move the needle around under the fur. Uh, you don't want to pierce through the skin, uh, the fur and come out the other end. That you That's what you don't want to do. When you pull, like, well, here, say, we'll say this is the, uh, your dog's shoulder areas. When you, you find it, you pull the skin up. And as you do, just imagine the elasticity of your skin being pulled up. And there's like a, like a gap, not a gap, but, you know, it's, it's pulled away enough from the fur or your skin muscle. Insert the needle as close to the top of that, but not pinching the muscle itself. Um, and... Once it sits in there properly, just put it, put the fur back down, apply, you know, f firm pressure, but not too hard. And then you manipulate, the, there's a little roller on the line. It's a little plastic piece of thing, I don't know what you call it. And it's got a little plastic wheel. If it's rolled up to the top, that's allowing the fluid to flow from the uh, bag through the line. Uh, through the needle into the uh, underneath the f uh, fur or flesh of the uh, of your pet. Once you're done and you've you, 
you know, you've applied the 300 milliliters or whatever the doctor prescribes to give your pet, uh, carefully roll the wheel down without moving the line in too much. Cause I, I, mean, I don't want to cause any discomfort for my pet. So I try to not force the thing cause I don't want to, you know, move the line and maybe move the needle and cause them discomfort. I don't know. Uh, if, you, if it's discomforting to them, I don't want to take a chance. So I'll hold it firmly, push the wheel down as quickly, but without the amount, the, the, the least, with the least amount of jiggling. And once you get that wheel all the way down, that should cut the flow of the fluids through the line. And then you uh, make sure you have a paper towel handy because once you, you know, remove the needle, uh, you're going to see like this hunchback of fluid built up on your pet's back shoulder area. And it, it's scary looking, but um, the, the body absorbs all that fluid in a matter of minutes. So, I mean, you can, if you wanted to, you can stand there and just watch it go all the way down. Um, it's going to leak. There's going to be leakage. So you want to, you know, blot it until it stops leaking. Uh, sometimes it, it stops right away. Sometimes, you know, you gotta stand there a minute or two and, um, you know, blot it. So let's get going. I'm taking up too much time. All right, hippie. You know what? I'm gonna move this up a little closer because I think we're a little too far away. So, you know, here we go. Bear with me. This isn't this isn't a professional uh, <coughs> video, but it's just to get you, give you an idea on what our new daily routine is. Misha already had her. She's waiting for her food. Now, just this enough where, well, hopefully, here we go. You're going to have to forgive me for the bedpost. Right. I woke her up. Shoulder blades right there. We're using a one inch needle and I'm going to apply it right now. Uh, what you want to do is make sure whenever you use a new bag that you run the fluids through the line and flush out any air pockets. You don't want any air pockets in that line when you first initially use a new bag. Um, the doctor told me not to, make sure not to. Uh, he didn't say why, but if he tells you not to, then make sure there is no air pockets in that line. Uh, a couple of tiny bubbles are okay, but if you got a gap, like maybe that much or that much with, of uh, no fluid, but you know, you can, it's obvious it's going to be air, you don't want that running through them. You know, so make sure you run, 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 let the fluids flow through the needle for maybe... 10, 15 seconds, even maybe 10 seconds, but you want to make sure it's stopped. There's no uh, air pockets or anything. So I'm going to do that right now. <laughs> 